Example 1. Sheet AG1. In this example, we'll create a waterfall chart. This kind of chart is only available from the 2016 version of Microsoft Excel onwards. This chart is also called a bridge graph. It's useful when focusing on changing values. In a waterfall graph, it's easy to see how each element, in our example the brand, increases or decreases the final result. We know where the results would be if we only have positive changes and how much it decreased due to this specific group of brands. Before inserting the graph, the data needs to be prepared. Start from the PY total, then go to the changes by brands followed by the final result total. This kind of graph looks best when the data is sorted. In our example, the sales of the brands are already sorted into descending order by the size of the sales change. Select any cell in the table and choose the waterfall graph from the Insert tab. In most cases, the totals are at the beginning and the end of the graph, but we can put them anywhere in the graph. Excel does not recognize the totals automatically, and we have to select them. To select the totals bar, click on it once, wait a second, and once again. When you see tiny circles on the corners of all the bars, it means that the whole of the series has been selected. After the second click, all of the bars, except the selected one, should have pale colors. Now right-click on it and select Set as Total, then repeat it for the last bar. Double-click on the axis and change the minimum to 3660. The chart is almost done. It just needs a little formatting. Select and delete the grid lines. It's obvious to see where the increases and decreases are, so we don't need a key. To delete the connector lines, right-click on the graph and select Format Data Series, then untick the lines. Here you can also change the size of the gaps between the bars, but the default 50% looks good. When wanting to change the colors, it's best to go to the Page Layout tab and click on Colors. Here you can choose your favorite color scheme. In my opinion, the intuitive color for increases is green and red for decreases. As there isn't a theme like that, I'll create my own. Accent 1 is increases, Accent 2 is decreases, and Accent 3 is the base bars. A little more formatting, no outline. Black font color. As this chart's purpose is to present changes, the changes values should be clearly visible. Our final chart clearly shows which brands and to what extent contributed to the increase in sales between 2018 and 2019, and which brands decreased the total result, and by how much. Due to the clear message and emphasis on the amounts rather than the percentages, this chart is commonly used in sales results presentations. If you plan to send your Excel file to someone who has an earlier version of Excel than 2016, please replace the graph with a picture of the graph, otherwise they'll only see the message this chart isn't available in your version of Excel instead. If you want the users of previous Excel versions to modify your waterfall charts, create a stacked column chart, which, after a few modifications, will look exactly the same as the waterfall chart shown in this example. The procedure of how to prepare a waterfall chart using a stacked column chart is shown in my Graphs for Experts lesson. Example 2. Sheet AG2. In this example, I won't introduce any new knowledge. I'd just like to show how, despite the fact that at some stage the options offered by Excel are not sufficient, thanks to the creative use of some existing options, we can create graphs in the forms we need. In a company's first half of the year, the sales increase compared to the previous year was stable and amounted to around 5%, so we can assume that in the second half of the year, the sales growth will be similar. In the third quarter, the company introduced a new promotion, which lasted until the end of the year, and thanks to the promotion, it was possible to increase sales to 7.3%. As there were no other important changes in the market, it can be assumed that the increase in sales in the fourth quarter could also be around 7.3%. Company management, encouraged by the positive results of the first promotion, introduced another one in the fourth quarter, whilst also keeping the first one active. As a result, the sales in the fourth quarter increased by 10.2%. The term business as usual is used to describe a situation in which a company does not make significant changes to its operations. 
we're going to present the same situation using a line graph with the line branching effect. To do this, we'll set up three series of data so that the one on the top is in the last column of the table. Select the data table and insert a line graph, the first type. Because many charts are prepared in order to copy into a PowerPoint presentation, we'll also format the graph so it would look good on a slide. Let's assume that the corporate presentation format has a dark background and we have to use it. The closest one to this format is probably style 6. The next step is to delete the grid lines and choose no fill and no outline. As long as we don't change the background to black or another dark colour, we will be able to see all the elements of the graph. Change the formatting, increasing the label font of both axes and emboldening them. Also, increase the font of the key and move it to the right, stretching it so that each description is more or less level with the end of the line it concerns. Now, double click on the data labels for the business as usual line and, under the label options tab, select the below 5% description for the first quarter moved down, but the same descriptions for the red and blue lines remaining on the line. We have to select them with two single clicks and delete them. Also, Two descriptions should be deleted for the second quarter, and one for the third quarter. Now we can move the remaining ones into the optimal positions. Also, increase the font sizes and embolden them. These settings are only possible when the column is sorted into descending order, according to the size of the last data. The chart will look better when a white axis is added. So, solid line, white. Please open the presentation file from the exercises folder and return to the Excel screen. Copy the graph and switch to PowerPoint. If we paste using Ctrl V, the format of the graph will change, so we'd better right click and choose the Keep Source Formatting Paste style. When resizing the graph, the fonts keep their original size and do not look good. Because of these reasons, I suggest pasting graphs as images. This way, changing the size impacts all of the elements equally. Example 3. Sheet AG3. To combine two labels on a horizontal axis and to have breaks between series of data, it's possible to add empty columns to the data source table in the places that we want there to be gaps. To avoid the empty columns ruining the look of the table, we can narrow them to one pixel, so they cannot be seen. In this exercise, for example, the width of column G is one pixel. By default, graphs do not show any data from hidden cells, but we can change that. Right click on the graph and select Select Data, then click on Hidden and Empty Cells and tick Show Data in Hidden Rows and Columns. Now we can hide columns G, L and Q, though the breaks remain visible. Example 4. Sheet AG4. Graphs can be more attractive by adding pictures to the bars or areas, such as the logo of rival companies. For people involved in an industry, graphs like this will be clear at first glance. We'll prepare the data on the number of passengers transported by three companies that operate in various branches of transport. If you want to use company logos, the logo of each company is easy to find and copy from the internet. In this course, I can use neither the trademarks of well-known brands, nor fake, nor real data, but nothing prevents us from using logos created for internal use in a company, or real data that we own the copyright to. We can add an image to Excel using the Pictures or Online Pictures tools from the Insert tab. But a more popular and easy way is to copy the image from a website or Google Image Finder and paste it into Excel using Ctrl-V, for example. Let's start by preparing an ordinary bar chart and formatting it. Choose the first photo and copy it. With a single click, select all of the bars. Then paste the image using the Ctrl-V shortcut. 
The image has been pasted onto all of the bars and has expanded. It doesn't look very good. So double click on the bars and using Format Data Series from the Fill tab, select Stack. Now copy the second image and only select the second bar with two single left clicks. Repeat this process for the third picture. The taller the graph, the more pictures fit in the bar. For these types of charts, it's best to choose photos that have the same proportions. Otherwise, the recipient may be mistaken by the number of images, when it's the height of the bar that actually represents the value. For example, I'll reduce the height of the plane picture and paste it onto the bar again. There are three trains and six planes, which may suggest that this bar is twice as high, which is obviously not true. In the same sheet below, we'll prepare a pie chart that uses the same images to fill the pie slices. If we wanted to show the market shares of several companies, using their logo would immediately show us who is who. I'll insert a pie chart and format it. Then paste the photo exactly as before. Double click on the pie and from the Format Data Point tab, select Tile Picture as Texture, then choose 40% for Scale X and Scale Y. Then repeat the process for the other pies. Using X and Y scaling, I can get any size of pictures to fill the graph. To fill the graph, you can also use the shapes available in Excel. From the Insert tab, select Shapes and insert a shape, then format it. Copy and paste it into the pie or to the bar, then format it like before. The last opportunity to make the charts more interesting that I would like to show you in this example is to insert a photo as the background of the chart. Right click in the graph area, not the plot area, and select Fill, then Picture. Choose the photo you want to use. After adding the image, the chart will usually require formatting to be clear against the colourful background. Pictures in uniform colours, without a lot of detail, and without people, are more suitable for data presentation as they don't draw attention away from the presented data. Example 5. Sheet AG5. This example is similar to the second example from my Graphs for Beginners lesson, but apart from the sales and margin values, we also have planned values. We can prepare this graph using the same methods shown in the aforementioned lesson, but in this case, I am going to show you a solution that will make creating the chart much faster. We plan to use the combo graph. Before doing so, the columns with the same types of data must be put next to each other. In our case, we have the plans first, then the results. Let's move the plan margin column one step to the right by dragging it using the shift key. Select all of the data, including the descriptions, but without the total, and from the insert tab, choose recommend charts, then all charts. At the bottom of the list, you will find the combo chart. Move the plan margin and result margin to the secondary axis and press OK. The graph is almost finished. For the plans, change the colours to green, the colour of hope, and change the results to grey, symbolising grey reality. Obviously, the choice of colours depends on your personal aesthetic preferences, or humour. Change the maximum on the sales scale from 1200 to 1800, so that the charts do not overlap. Then select No Outline, and make all the fonts black, including the title. At this point, the question of why a similar chart in the Grasp for Beginners lesson was done differently may arise. The answer is to learn how to control each element of the chart and to know what can be changed. Example 6. Sheet AG6. In this example, a company with a stable sales growth and a stable number of orders would like to easily estimate the future sales growth for the assumed increase in orders. For this purpose, we'll prepare a scatter graph, create a trend line for it, and calculate the R-squared coefficient of determination, which tells us to what extent the variability of Y depends on the variability of X. 
The first step is to select the range containing the data. After that, insert a scatter graph using the first subtype. Delete the grid line. Right click on one of the points and select Add Trend Line. In the Format Trend Line window, Linear Trend Line should be selected as it describes the changeability of the phenomenon well. Below, tick Display Equation on Chart and Display R Squared Value on Chart. As a result, the trend line is displayed, as well as its formula and the R squared coefficient, which in this case amounts to 0.9598, which confirms that using the obtained forecasting function will get a high quality estimate. The equation needs to be copied into the cell under the table, omitting Y and replacing X with the cell address of the cell containing the expected change in the number of orders. The increase in the number of orders is estimated at 8%, and using our function, we can calculate that an increase in sales at the same level is expected. In real business data, it's impossible to achieve such a good correlation, since there are many factors affected by one another. You can find out more about the subject of correlation and forecasting in my Analysis Tool Pack lesson. Example 7. Sheet AG7. In this exercise, we'll create an XY graph with labelled points. First, select the data without labels and select the first subtype of scatter graph from the Insert tab. Then click on the plus symbol, select Data Labels, then More Options. Under the Format Data Labels tab, deselect Y value and tick Value from Cells, then select the range where the descriptions of the points are and press OK. Countries as points labels have now been added to the chart. After formatting the chart, increasing the font size and adding a title, the chart is easy to read and useful. Example 8. Sheet AG8. In this example, we'll create a demographic pyramid. This kind of graph is also called a comparative histogram. To prepare this graph, the data shown on the left-hand side needs to have negative values. Select the table with the data and select the second 2D bar subtype of bar chart from the Insert tab. The default graph is close to what we want to achieve. There's only a little bit of formatting left to do. Under the Design tab, select Style 5. Double-click on the vertical axis and set the axis labels low. Double click on the bars and reduce the gap width to zero. Right click and add the data labels to both data series. Now we'll get rid of the minus signs. Right click on them, format the data labels, then select number, set the category to custom and leave it on a default selection. Repeat the same formatting for the horizontal axis. Select the chart and then choose black as the colour of all the fonts. That will change all the fonts to black without affecting their other parameters like size for example. Now I'll show you a trick which is especially useful when preparing many similar graphs. The title of the graph will be taken from a cell. Select the title. Whenever the value in cell B2 is changed, the title is appropriately updated. Example 9. Sheet AG9. A sales representative has achieved exceptionally good results within the space of a year and moved from the bottom of the ranking to become one of the best sellers. Unfortunately, this chart does not look very impressive because we have a strong sense that up means good and down means bad. Double click on the vertical axis, then tick Values in Reverse Order under the Format Axis tab. In my Graphs for Experts lesson, you'll find the following. Graph counters, a thermometer graph, charts showing the degree of project performance against a background of colourful degrees of completion, a graph that looks like a potentiometer, and a Gantt diagram. As you can see from my many examples in this lesson, with a few simple Excel graphs, you can present data in many interesting ways. 
How far can you go? This is the xy xl graph showing a curve which is a trace that leaves the point of a circle rolling inside a larger circle, the so-called hypercycloid. You can read more about this curve on Wikipedia. When preparing the graphs, we must remember that an attractive style should not blur the message of the graph, which is the most important part for all kinds of analyses and presentations. The possibilities of human perception are limited, and the purpose of the chosen form is to facilitate the understanding of the data and its connections, and not to try and prove our outstanding abilities in Excel or care for aesthetics. You can find out more about this topic in my lesson, Advanced Professional Reports. More about the graphs can also be found in my sparklines, pivot graphs, and mathematical graphs lessons. We adjust this course all the time in order to make it perfect, so your comments will help us a lot.